Hey guys, it's Jay. Um, I'm making this recording now because I'm anticipating my arrivals arriving sooner than expected. And I wanted to put together the training ahead of time so we could prepare and ask some questions and address any issues that arise. So hopefully uh, this will get the job done. Uh, I'm going to present the presentation now on park training. Uh, it should be here in the health room. And when you came in, you should have taken two forms. You should have taken a purple booklet and you should have taken a tan form. Pertaining to those, uh, they should have been right next to the sign-in sheet. You have to sign in and you have to sign out when you leave um, or just put the time. You know, I think the, the uh, sign in sheet says printed name, time in, time out and sign. So if you could, uh, if you haven't already printed your name uh, and the time in, uh, please go ahead and do so. And next to that, you should have had two things. One was the security plan and the other one was the testing agreement. Most of this stuff is going to kind of be like the NJS that we did last year in terms of Here's our security plan. Here's our information uh, pertaining to the park assessment. Uh, the security plan, go ahead and review that on your own. It's pretty much virtually the same thing as the other plan that we did last year in terms of NJ Ask, just who to call, the chain of command, storage of materials. I will say for the most part, that's really not going to apply to us because we really don't have any materials to store except for uh, entry tickets and scoring codes. But we, we don't have to worry about the bulk of all that kind of stuff. The other form, uh, the TAN form, is the testing agreement. That's the security agreement. It's kind of like last year, almost same thing. You know, you're not going to sit there with your phone and take pictures of the test. You're not going to look at the test. You're not going to do anything with the test. Uh, and if you do, uh, consequences can be issued. If you could go ahead and sign on the line below, Al is going to collect those. And if you have any questions on either of them, you could ask Al or you could email myself. So uh, this year we have two parts of the actual park test. The first part is called the performance-based assessment, and that's going to be in late March. That's when about 75% of the academic year is done. The second part is the end-of-year assessment. Uh, that's going to take place when approximately 90% of the school year is done. And that will take place in mid-May. Uh, it's grades 3 to 8 this year for ELA and mathematics. And as just a reminder, uh, there's also grades 4 and 8 in science, but that's not in the park. That's actually still going to be the NJ ask. It's going to be one morning, maybe about an hour and a half, if that. And it's we're going to knock it out, no problem. So what you see right here is just a visual of the, again, the PBA is the performance-based assessment, and the EOY is the end-of-year assessment. And as you can see, it breaks down into the ELA and math. There's two units. We have a non-calculator section and the calculator section for those in the math. And for the PBA, we have three units in terms of some literacy analysis, uh, analysis excuse me, some research simulation, and we also have some narrative writing. If you look on top here on the slide, you'll actually see a timeline. And one of the things in terms of this uh, test is that while you see, if you look at number three, it says administer the unit. And the test can be between 45 and 90 minutes. I guarantee you nobody, with the exception of maybe some special ed students, will take 90 minutes on this test. If you remember earlier in the year, we shared uh, a slide that actually said, you know, we gave the kids 75 minutes. 95% of them finished it in 60 minutes or, you know, we just have those times built in. But we also have to build in, you know, the time of kids arriving, any questions, uh, test materials, which we'll talk about in this, and any other, you know, paperwork that we have to address. So a couple things with this test. The first being no more than two tests per day per student. So we are, you know, we have a variety of assessments to take, but we're not going to take like 15 in a day and just knock it all out. We could do two tests at a time, uh, but we can do them. We can do them back to back, which is called stacking. So we are allowed to stack one test with another test, and we can take a break in between. Uh, those with IEPs or 504s, uh, you have to start the day testing in the morning. And those with 504s and IEPs, 
uh, are allowed the entire day to take that section of the test. So whatever we give, so if you know we give unit one and uh, unit two of writing, those students, you know, typically uh, regular ed students would take about 180 minutes, which they won't. It'll be much less than that. But those in special population can take up to the whole day. Uh, we can combine grades. We can combine content areas. Yeah, th this is basically making testing much easier for us as administration because we're allowed to kind of jockey things around and, and not be so uh, segregated in terms of testing as it was in the past. Uh, you know, that's the other thing too, like absent students, we don't have to necessarily wait till the following week to administer certain tests. You know, if Eitner's out on Monday, uh, but he's back on Tuesday, he could actually start Monday's test and the other kids can start Tuesday's test because everybody's individualized. So as you can see here, actually, here is the actual timing of each of the tests. Uh, obviously, we don't have to worry about Algebra 2, Algebra 1, or Geometry. Uh, just for the record, we are going to give the Grade 8 math test, not the Algebra 1 math test. As I uh, take a glass of water here. So you see the abbreviations mid-screen. Uh, again, all this stuff is going to be outlined. It'll be outlined in what's called your scripts. Uh, there are scripts in the front, and Al, this is your key, or if I'm actually here just listening to this, uh, this is my key to give out all of these scripts at this time. Everybody should have a script with their name on it. There's two versions. There's a three to five, and there's a six to eight. If you remember, like last year, we had those manuals that literally have the words say, today you'll be taking blah, blah, blah. It's the same thing, okay? It's just the same type of scripts, and it's the same type of process. But again, the paperwork is an absolute minimum at this point. So uh, what's new for this year, though, compared to the NJS, if you look at the slide, accommodations for all students this year. We could offer anybody small group testing. We could offer anyone frequent breaks, a separate location, and a preferred seating assignment. The catch is you as the teacher need to tell me, Al, before the actual test is given. So at least one week I would prefer if you know that so-and-so isn't going to do well in the room with everybody else and needs that small group testing, regardless if the student is a special education student or they have a 504 or whatever, if you know that so-and-so works better in a small group, Make a list up, and we could actually separate, and we could, you know, quote unquote, divide and conquer. Um, I need that list at least one week in advance. I'm probably going to ask it for two, because then it goes into room plays and it starts taking assignments away from other people. So uh, I do need that list earlier. The, the the earlier the better. We'll put it that way. In terms of the day of testing, most of this stuff is uh, for Al and I, but if you kind of look, this is the the overall drill. Uh, we will have the setup again, like in the morning, you'll come in, uh, you will get a bucket like we did last year, okay, those little buckets that we gave out that had all the materials. The buckets this year, they're going to have very little, uh, the biggest piece is going to be their actual admission ticket and key code. So, no, you're not collecting tickets at the door, but each kid will have an individual code that they will need to log on with. So you'll pick those up in the morning, depending on the day, calculators, if your section warrants it. Uh, any special ed instructions, scrap paper, stuff like that. So this goes through the actual process itself. And again, if you have any questions on what you're seeing, please, please, please send me an email. Because chances are, with two little cherubs, I won't be sleeping that much. Uh, one of the things you will see when kids actually log in now is you're going to see different statuses of the students. So in this case, when a kid logs in, you will see what they're doing, where they're at, and, you know, eventually, hopefully, you'll see each kid that says marked complete. So, and that's when, you know, Al and I will go in and verify that the kid took the test. We're not looking at the test, but we're just saying, okay, uh, this batch was submitted to us, and we're just checking it off saying that it is okay to go. So, it's going to give us much more information in terms of who's where, who's completed, um, you know, if you have to exit for the restroom or if you, you know, this and that. And we're going to get through all that protocol in a little bit. But I wanted to show you this kind of status bar so you, you can actually see, you know, what to expect on the, on the screens. 
one of the biggest pieces, again, this year is uh, we don't have the test booklets or answer sheets, but we do have sign-in screens and we have testing tickets. So the testing ticket and the seal code will be issued each morning. The testing ticket will have be the same, and we believe, because this hasn't been finalized yet, but we believe the seal code will be different for each test and for each student. And that's going to generate, again, it's going to generate that individual login piece. Okay? Uh, if you look below, you will see uh, there is an actual guidance sheet on practicing. And you could practice with your students now on how to log in and log out. And that's that website right in the beginning right there, the avisay.pearson.com slash park and home. You are required as an instructor, as a certificated staff member, to keep time. Uh, we Last year, we used the smart boards with the timer on them. That's perfectly fine. If you want to use an actual egg timer or a stopwatch, please see me. I don't have a problem with it. We did make some uh, justifications and modifications last year. That shouldn't be a big deal. In terms of testing materials this year, uh, we are allowed to give blank scratch paper, as you can see. Calculators, uh, we are allowed to give for grades 6 through 8. 3, 4, and 5 will not have calculators, but each grade level, uh, let, me, let me correct that, grades 6 and 7 will have one version of calculators. Grade 8 will have a different version of calculators. That will be in your plastic bin the morning of the actual test. Your timing device, there is a hideously bright orange testing sign that says you're testing. Uh, seal codes will be in there. Your leisure reading materials. Uh, I'm going to leave that up to your discretion. We are going to allow reading materials after the test. If the student can place those reading materials under their seat and not next to them or around them or even on the shelf, uh, whatever they're bringing in, they got to place it underneath the seat. Leisure reading materials are fine as long as it is school appropriate. Uh, I don't even mind, you know, if it's a magazine that's going to keep our... Uh, cherub quiet at the time then that's fine but obviously school appropriate is paramount math reference sheets will be given out this year and if you note grades five through eight are going to have the same exact reference sheet no reference sheets are going to be given out for grades three and four these are paper issued and there will be on the actual test the box that they could click on and look at other different types of reference sheets so Whatever we're giving out, we also have, like on the screen, will be in hand as well. So again, they will have an option for, let's say, scrap paper. We're giving out scrap paper, but they also have scrap paper online that they could use with their mouse. Uh, there is a reference sheet online in the test, and they will have a paper copy. There is a calculator online that I'll show you in a minute. And there's also the actual physical calculators that we're giving out. Uh, in terms, again, uh, uh, that's the next slide. So you have your online tools and intangible tools. So in terms of uh, we are going to provide an actual ruler. We will provide the protractors. Um, we're going to do that from grades 3 to 8, so they will be in your bins the day of testing. In terms of calculators, what I said before, there will be a box on the uh, test taker screen that will have a calculator that will be specifically geared toward what they need. Uh, if they don't want to use that, grades 6 and 7, that is the model that I ordered, Cheryl. <laughs> it's the uh, TI-108. Uh, strictly, it's a four-function calculator, and that's what we were told to get. Uh, the eighth graders are allowed to use the calculators that we have from last year. Uh, but that's it. And as you can see, they're only used in math sections. Uh, Obviously not in non-calculator sections, which it will say very clearly, this is a calculator section or this is a non-calculator section. You could use both. Uh, whatever we give out, we're giving back in. No calculators in grades 3 to 5 unless the IEP or 504 says so. Real big one, no cell phone calculators. And I know some of them are very handy dandy and they love them, but no electronic devices will be allowed in the room. And, of course, I would hope that you practice with them a little bit before. Uh, as always, the proverbial uh, fear-mongering of security and testing. So please don't peek. You don't have to copy. Please don't read them. 
Uh, it's the same implications as last year in terms of testing. There can be financial consequences, professional consequences, disciplinary consequences for staff and students. Uh, we know the deal, and we know that we're going to take this test honestly and wholesomely, and we'll leave it at that. In terms of the testing room, uh, I would ask that no book bags, coats, or purses be at the testing desk or table. You could hang them up in the coat room. You could hang them. You could leave them in the lockers, whatever the case may be. I am going to ask that all instructional displays be taken down. So please, any math problems, any facts, any wonders of the world, any type of anchor charts, uh, please go ahead and remove them at this time. We won't be making announcements. We won't be making any phone calls into rooms, especially those of testing. Anything that we need, we will physically walk down to. There is absolutely no electronic devices allowed in the testing rooms or testing areas, including staff members. So what we did for most classes last year, I would ask that you collect everybody's phone, you have them turn it off in front of you, you get your post-it notes out, throw a post-it note on the phone or a rubber band with a piece of paper on the kid's phone, put it in a plastic tub, and just put it out in front of the hallway. You don't have to worry about kids walking around or, or snooping around. We will have proctors in the hallway again, but I, I found that to be the easiest way because the same rule applies. If the cell phone goes off or an electronic device goes off in the room, it's an irregularity report. Uh, and again, leisure reading, you're allowed to have, you know, as long as you keep it under the seat, but please no e-readers. So no Kindles or, you know, they can't take out their Chromebook to uh, read something afterwards or my own reading or anything like that. Uh, also, assign seating for rows and columns, and unless you're obviously in a small group, we'll give you kind of a sketch and just tell us where they're sitting. I prefer ABC order. Hopefully, you do too, just to keep the you know things nice and easy for everybody. I could get you seating charts; that won't be a problem. Uh, if you can keep that clock on the smart board, or I'm sorry, Promethean boards we have here. If not, uh, if you want to just keep a track of time, saying you know every 10 minutes you update it. Bathroom breaks are totally fine as long as you have the proctor walking back and forth. And finally, hooray, this year, proctors can be subs, aides, uh, staff members on prep. I'm going to really not utilize that prep time and, you know, utilize the aides, subs, and everybody else because we can now. So that's, uh, that's a big win for us. Uh, of course, quiet hallways and the do not disturb signs on the doors when we're testing. Uh, just to jump over to the actual test itself, students will be given, besides the actual Chromebook and or, you know, if they're taking it at the desktop, every kid will have a pair of headphones and a speaker so they could actually talk, they could interact with the test. Um, there's all kinds of different things that every student can get in terms of accessibility. And if you, as you look at this list, everything from raising the audio to a highlighting tool you could flag items, you could eliminate answer choices, all these things can be done. Uh, in addition to, again, we're going to give out the pencils and the blank paper. Uh, we do not need to put up any type of test barriers or dividers. Um, that's a really blurry picture, I'm sorry. <laughs> but you do have a, an answer making accessibility piece. You could change the colors. Uh, you could mask some answers. It's not officially out yet, but they said they will have it. And you can even do text-to-speech for the math assessment. So if a kid has a question and they need something read to them, they can make that option in the actual test itself, which I think is kind of awesome. Uh, again, you know, your answer making, you can change your colors, uh, your text-to-speech. Oh, maybe that's the second slide here. Moving on, okay, you can, still, you can do line readers, notepads. They have glossaries sometimes for some words, depending on who it is. Uh, they do have some spell checking. They do have some writing tools. So again, all, all of these things are in the actual test for all students, not just 504 or special ed. But let's talk about those 504s and special ed students right now. There are over 50 different modifications that are available. I'm guessing we're going to use maybe three or four tops. Uh, we don't have, let's say, students who are legally deaf or blind. We don't have... OOD students or ED students or all the other classifications that typically run in larger public school settings. Uh, we have a modicum of a set, you know uh, accommodations that we're going to use, uh, and Michelle is actually going to be responsible for uploading all those modifications 
in our software before the student tests. Uh, there's, you don't have to worry about, you know, you're not going to have to go in there and click this and add this and change this. We take care of all of that before the test is given. And again, we upload all of those features. Um, again, I said about two weeks before, if you identify the students with extra time in small testing groups, uh, automatically, if you have a 504, well, not automatically with a 504, but automatically with an IEP, uh, you're automatically in a small testing group environment. Most 504 students are also in a small testing group environment, but this year, everybody can go in a small testing group environment. So if you really feel that so-and-so needs to be in a small group environment, please identify them and send that list to me as soon as possible because it is going to take a little bit of time in terms of logistics to plan each room. We do have an option legally to uh, institute a temporary or an emergency 504 plan. So for example, uh, Eitner's playing on the monkey bars and he misses a bar and he falls and breaks his hand and now he can't type and he needs to uh, speak all of his answers because it's too painful to try to type in the answers. We could write a 504 plan saying that Eitner can do that and we could actually make that change uh, the day of testing so that it takes place. Some forms this year, uh, kind of like last year with the irregularity reports and all the other ones, the forms, whatever you need, will be in the tubs and they will be of different colors. The first form that we have is an emergency accommodation form. Uh, that's what I just kind of talked about, that whole scenario of, you know, Eitner breaks his arm and this is what we're doing. Uh, we fill out that form. Uh, two other forms that we're going to leave in there for you. There is actually an accommodation refusal form. So if, uh, you know, Eitner has 90 minutes on the test, but he knocked it out in 10, and we offered him that extra time, and he's blatantly refusing, and that's the key word, blatantly refusing. You know, he doesn't want the certain accommodations that we gave. We have to fill out a form saying that this child does not want these accommodations. And then there's also, it's called the unique request form. I don't anticipate using this, but I'm putting it in the box like everything else just in case. Uh, that's all I have. Uh, hopefully this wasn't too painful. Please sign out before you leave and email me with any questions. And thank you so much. And I'm going to make this, uh, hopefully, if you missed anything, I should be able to share it with you and put it in the, the staff portal or just email it to everybody as a whole. Thanks so much and have a good day.